Pop quiz. Who are the champions? No. Hell no. That's the one. Digimon. Part of the monster raising boom of the 90s. Lots of companies have tried to get a piece of that lucrative pie first baked by Satoshi Tajiri and his fiendishly popular Pokemon franchise. Digimon was first conceived by Bandai in 1997 as the, quote, masculine counterpart to Tamagotchi. They caught on, and after the release of a few video games, a card game, and the much beloved Digimon anime series, we got Digimon World 3 in 2002 for the PS1. And let me tell you, I played this game a lot as a kid, which is a testament to how children have no concept of when their time is being wasted. Yeah, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Digimon World 3 does not hold up today. It is the grindiest, most cryptic, turn-based RPG I have ever played. And I've played a lot. You play as an MMO-addicted child named Junior, who follows the Digimon tradition of main characters wearing goggles on their forehead. They do nothing, though. Ah, and I see we're also getting a little Pokemon inspiration here with the hat turned backwards. Yeah, shocker. This game takes a lot of inspiration from Pokemon. It's like Bandai got tired of trying to be different with the first two games and just said screw it. Everybody says Digimon is like Pokemon, might as well lean into it. After jacking into Digimon Online, no, not that one, I get to pick my starting party. I chose the one with Agumon for reasons that will be abundantly clear later. Don't worry if you have to pass up on one of your favorite Mons. They can all be acquired later. Also, no Terriermon and therefore no Gargamon makes Skelly an angry skeleton. Gargamon! Huh? He's got pants now. Well, at least the furries weren't left out in the cold. After taking my first few steps out into the world of Digimon, I get stopped by this old dude who promptly thrashes my Monmon because I can't land any hits. The enemy keeps evading them. <laughs> Yeah, evading. I guess they couldn't call it blocking because that wouldn't make much sense, considering that your speed stat is what determines if you hit the enemy, if the enemy hits you, and if you can get a double turn. It's a vitally important stat, and we'll talk more about it later. I eventually switch to Agumon and get off a lucky pepper breath to end the fight. Get used to it, little buddy. You're gonna be my workhorse. The old guy then says we have the potential to be the world champ, and you know I'm eager to be crowned the best at telling monsters what to do while I chill on the sidelines, so we head out to challenge the gym leader of Seiryu City. And before we get into the main crux of what brings this game down, I've got to give credit to what it does right. The visuals outside of battle are downright charming. That's the great thing about pixel and pre-rendered graphics. They withstand the test of time and still look good to this day. I've always loved how your Digimon partners follow behind you and lurch forward whenever you stop, like slamming the brakes on a car. Though the sound of Junior's pitter-pattering footsteps could have been toned down or just removed altogether. <laughs> The music is great. Asuka City remains one of the most nostalgic themes for me, and the Central Park theme is absolutely delightful. The elevator music when saving the game is a nice tune to chill out to, considering how long it takes to save. I can't say I like the regular battle theme very much since I've heard it, oh, I don't know, like a million times, but the boss battle theme is always a radical treat. Getting back to the graphics, the one aspect that I think hasn't aged as well is the battle screen. The models are well detailed for the PS1, but the backgrounds are fugly and the attack animations are lacking. A lot of Digimon attack by leaping forward and then jumping straight back to their spot. It looks really stupid. Plus you get a lot of recycled animations for special attacks, Greymon being one of the worst examples. Here's a fireball. Here's three fireballs. Here's a big fireball. And here's his signature move, Nova Blast, which you don't even get until like level 60. Are you kidding me? I suppose it's understandable since there are a healthy number of Digimon evolutions to play with, so it would have been a lot of work to give them all unique animations. 
the game would have looked much better if it had just stuck to its guns and used pixel graphics for battles as well. But I can just see the suits at Bandai taking a look at this during early development and asking, where are the 3D graphics? This is supposed to be cutting edge PlayStation, not this pussy pixel bullshit. Such a shame. At least the opening cinematic is still awesome. Gives me goosebumps every time. Getting back to the main game, I start making my way to Seiryu City, fighting the requisite Caterpies and Raditas. Very quickly, I get Agumon to level 5, which unlocks his Greymon evolution. Awesome! You can set an evolution to automatically be active for every fight, but I always like to digivolve for the first time in battle. For anybody that wonders why I like Digimon so much, this is why. Badass and memorable monster designs. Raymon could have just been a generic T-Rex looking dude, but give him blue stripes and an awesome bone skull plate and the design becomes a million times more distinct. Oh cool, we got Mon Mon's evolution. He's one of the original Digimon designed just for this game. Let's see what we got. Um... What the hell is that? <laughs> Once I get to Seiryu City, I discover that the gym leader isn't around, so I'm sent to the Protocol Ruins to find him. I go there and I start looking around and ooh. I'm not sure why, but I just got a chill down my spine. Don't talk to this guy unless you're ready for a fight. Because despite him saying, I must warn you, I am powerful, you aren't given the option to back out. Good, you're ready. No, I'm not. God damn it. Well, we're doing this now, and I think I just remembered why I'm so scared of this guy. Well, it's a good thing I'm playing this on an emulator like a normal person. Back in the day, I was pissed. This is a brutal beginner's trap that I'm sure a lot of kids fell into. Because you have to pass right by this guy to get to the gym leader. It's impossible to not see him. And what kid is gonna think, nah, I'd better not talk to that guy. Anyway, I talk to the gym leader right around the corner, and he won't let me challenge him until I defeat Master Tyranno. So it's straight back out the door and to a whole other zone. This is just a small taste of the proverbial run around that this game puts you through multiple times. You'll see. Since I've built up some levels, now's a good time to talk about how stats work, but not before running all the way back to the start of the game to Leomon's gym. There's no fast travel, by the way. That would lessen the amount of time that you have to spend grinding. Every level earns you five training points that can be spent to increase stats, but it's not as simple as just putting them into the stat you want. You gotta put your Digimon through a training session with a chance to fail. Succeed all three times and you get a chance at bonus points. And yes, you can fail all three times and get diddly squat. I wouldn't know anything about that since I'm playing this on an emulator like a normal person. Don't judge me, okay? The grind in this game is legendary. Do not neglect speed unless you want to miss every attack and get double turned by the enemy multiple times in a fight. It is absolutely the most important stat. Don't skip leg day. Also, see what I mean about going pixel graphics all the way would have been so much better? These little animations are great. After getting swole and not putting nearly enough points into speed, a mistake which I'll regret later, I make my way to Tyrano Valley and challenge the master. And since my Agumon's speed is low, I get put in a situation where I keep getting attacked twice in a row and can't heal enough to counter. And since I've put most of my focus on Agumon and neglected the other two, they don't stand a chance and I lose the fight. Ah yes, it's all coming back to me now. Time for a good old fashioned grinding session. <laughs> Even without making the trip back to the gym to improve my stats, leveling up does give Agumon enough HP to get through the fight. Now I can go back and fight the gym leader, and fail because I run out of healing items in the middle of the fight. <sighs> 
There, that should do it. Using the power of money, I managed to defeat the gym leader. I'm then told to take the gondola to get to South Sector and challenge the next gym leader. And here's where the cryptic shit really starts to rear its ugly head. But first, I'm gonna go back to Pharaomon and make him pay for all the grief he caused me as a child. That was a DNA Digivolution. Basically, you can spend MP to do some damage when switching to another Digimon in battle, but they have to be compatible for it to work. What do you get for defeating this optional boss? A very underwhelming weapon. This game really knows how to mess with your expectations. I get to the gondola, and the computer tells me that I can't use it until I have a blue card. Apparently, Gilmon has one, but of course, the one that's been chilling in Seiryu City has disappeared, and nobody has anything to say to point you in the right direction. So in the true video game spirit of, I don't know what else to fucking do, I wander back to Asuka City at the beginning of the game, again, and find a Gilmon in the inn. Oh, but this isn't the one that has the card, he says his cousin does. Cousin? He said he's going to Seiryu City, but he's hungry, so he may stop somewhere to eat. Now, you can imagine that a child would probably be getting a little impatient at this point. I've essentially been speed hacking the game to make it more bearable, but back in the day, on original hardware, these slow-ass battles with insignificant XP gains make these trips back and forth absolutely exhausting. And that's assuming you even know where to go. You could easily spend hours wandering around with no direction until you stumble on the right NPC to talk to. As a kid, I had no idea where the fuck a Gilmon would like to eat. Anyway, he He's at the cabin rest area in the East Wire Forest. And guess what? This one doesn't have the blue card either. He says that Gilmon is in Seiryu City. More time wasting later and we find a, quote, tricky Gilmon at the inn. He gives me the card, says we should go try it out, and laughs. Well thanks man, I'll go do that. Oh, looks like that scamp Gilmon played a funny trick on me. <laughs> Ooh, I'm gonna beat your fucking ass. Naturally, he's not there, but I go a little north and find another Gilmon that tells me he's hiding in a basement filled with ghosts. But he'll only tell you that if you talk to him twice. I would like to remind you this is only the start of the cryptic bullshit. I go to the basement of that cabin rest stop because it felt particularly spooky, and there he is, finally ready to give me the blue card so I can finally get on with the game. Boy, I feel so much more enriched as a person after experiencing that clusterfuck of poorly designed game length padding. So I get on the gondola, get stopped by a boss that runs away before I can beat it, denying me an XP boost. I hate it when RPGs do that. And look, finally, an all new area with all new things to explore. There's just one problem. The way to the next city is being blocked by Zambamon, who I cannot defeat. And if you spend too much time wandering around the jungle grave where he's stationed, a super powerful enemy named Musiamon has a chance to show up and absolutely destroy you. Thankfully, I do have an ace that I've been building up since the start of the game. That was a blast digivolution, basically a limit break. Once this bar fills up, you'll digivolve to the next level with a full heal and access to that form's signature attack. The bar fills so ridiculously slowly that it's really only intended as a way to see more powerful levels early. But I suppose with enough patience, you could build it up before a boss fight to make it no challenge at all. This is why I chose Agumon, by the way. Skull Greymon is just so damn cool. So, what do you have to do to get past Zambamon? <sighs> Talk to Gatomon. Talk to Sepikmon in the Shaman House. He won't help us unless we find his mask. Go back to Bulk Swamp and talk to Kale, one of Junior's two friends that I didn't bother mentioning because the story really is not worth talking about. She tells us that Baronmon, all the way back in East Sector, has the mask. The place that you likely just spent hours being given the royal runaround by a family of asshole Gilmons. Wonderful. I'm so happy that I have to go back there again. Oh, by the way, did I mention there's a card game? 
It's bad. Go to Seiryu City and talk to Agumon. Go to the Protocol Ruins and find Baronmon. Get told that Sepikmon has his mask and that he's in Asuka City. Back at the beginning of the game again. Find Sepikmon outside of Asuka City. He won't help us. Go inside the city and to the lower level to find Edamon. Edamon tells us that Sepikmon ran towards Divermon Lake. Go to Divermon Lake and find some random dude in a black suit that says Edamon has the mask. Go back to Edamon and he runs off into the sewers. Go talk to him in the sewers and he gives you the mask. Go all the way back to the swamp. Give it to Sepikmon, and he'll give you a smelly herb that makes Zambamon run away. Keep in mind that any one of these steps could result in hours of wandering around aimlessly without a clue of where to go. Maybe because you didn't understand a step, or just wasn't given enough info. Completely tedious and unenjoyable when speed hacking, downright cruel and unusual punishment when playing on original hardware. And it just gets worse from there to the point where I gave up. It was much later in the game when you find out that the people running Digimon Online are the bad guys, and the good guy hacker trying to stop them gets turned into a Digimon. This happens in his secret base, which is a stupidly long distance from the beginning of the game, and you have to run all the way back to Asuka City at the beginning of the game to fight the Game Master. So I do that, I find out the main entrance is sealed, go through the sewers, fight Datamon, who can open the door into the city, and find out that he'll only open it if I have a Digimon Online staff pass, which I don't. And the game doesn't even tell you where to go to get one. You know how you get it? Walk all the way back to the guy that got turned into a Digimon in his secret base. Would you look at that? I beat Digimon World 3. Once I read that in the walkthrough, I just put my head in my hands. That's not a joke, I really did that. And according to the walkthrough, I was only about halfway through the game. If I was near the end, then maybe I would have had the patience to make that trip again, but no, my patience is gone. So after all these years, why do people fondly remember Digimon World 3 when it's so clearly designed to waste the player's time? Well, besides a combination of the charming visuals and music, back in 2002, this was the most solid Digimon game experience you could get. The incredible popularity of Pokemon at the time was likely also a large contributor. People wanted that monster-themed combat on other consoles, and Digimon World 3 filled that hole on the PlayStation. I get that, I had the same mindset. It's why I played the Jade Cocoon demo so often. Digimon World 3 starts strong, but it gets old fast. It really has no place in today's world of better designed video games. Man, I really hope Digimon Survive is good when it comes out. Please consider becoming a spooky scary subscriber, because if you like Digimon but was disappointed by my harshness with this game, stick around. I have something much more positive to talk about in the next video. It's gonna be prodigious. Until then, this is A Skeleton signing out. Did this guy really need the mechanical anus?